you something else. Let's go, baby, let's go! Three, two, one! Let's go, baby, let's go! Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome to a, another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode here on YouTube. So before we get started, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get your daily dose of, you know, sarcasm. So on this episode, man, got a dope, dope one for you. Um, We're still talking about, you know, baggage, emotional baggage, you know, the causes and effects of your healing traumas and triggers so this one i brought some very dope people uh you've seen them before so i would love to welcome first from this could be a book i would love to welcome my guest fatu hey hey hello human hello 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 how are you i'm good ish today good ish it's, oh. it's the sky is beautiful but the weather is cold well yeah i i can understand that i do but hey, we're still here. We're still breathing. So let's just enjoy it while we can. That part. Yes, definitely. So thank you for coming along. And on my next guest, man, she is so dope. Uh, she is from the Kickback Podcast. She's been on with me before. She's joined me. I've even been on hers. So I would love to welcome from the Kickback Podcast, my guest and the host, Miss E-Class. Hey, how's everybody doing? What's going on, lady? What's going on? Chilling. <laughs> yes, I see that, especially in your bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a correction. It's a kimono, okay? Get it right. So it, I mean, it's kimono to Chinese. It's bathrobe to us, so it's fine. It's fine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, okay, okay. But thank you uh, so much, ladies, for joining me. So uh, today's topic probably might share some tears so hopefully y'all got some tissues and y'all want to like keep that to the side just saying just saying okay <laughs> so on today's podcast we're talking about emotional baggage and the trauma it can cause so i know with y'all guys being women it doesn't always necessarily have to mean relationships it can mean anything whether it's friends family or even significant others so anyone would like to start or do you want me to go um, you can go. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna tell him to go ahead because. Ah, <laughs> okay, fine. Going. fine. I, I, I will go <laughs> ahead. So I've had a lot of emotional baggage myself from not just relationships. I've had friends to where I can remember. I had a friend who we were good friends for a good couple years, and then all of a sudden, it's just like they cut you off. And then you start thinking, what the hell happened? And I have triggers and traumas from it because it almost makes me not want to trust people. Not want to be able to let someone in because you have that one moment of vulnerability to where you think, okay, this person can't hurt me, can't damage me. And the next thing you know, they just ghost you without no notice. And then there's been certain times to where I would try to reach out to this person and be like, hey, what's going on? And then ghost. But it's even another fucked up thing to where you'll see they read the message or they've gotten it, but they've never responded. Neither of them have replied to any of my texts. And I feel some type of way about that. Even though I'm not the person to hold grudges because I can't do that. Because as we grow, we live and we learn, we shouldn't hold on to things. But some of that resentment, it does bother me. It really does. I am going through something right now as similar to what you're saying. Um, and it triggers my abandonment issue mm -hmm. that I got from my father when I was younger. Um, I just remember everything being okay, like going to spend summers, him and my mom were not together. And um, one year they decided, so I am originally from California, Sacramento, and he lived in San Diego. So him and my mom drove and met like halfway. Yeah. And he was with his then uh, wife. And um, after that, that was the summer going into my fifth grade. The next time that I saw him was going in, I was going to my 12th grade in high school. Um, I would call and I can hear him in the background and his wife would tell him that, you know, tell me that he wasn't there 
or I would leave messages and they would never be returned. And so as a kid, I just remember being so devastated, like thinking that I, I did something wrong. Like, what did I do? And yep. so, um, you know, I have emotional trauma from my mom that's completely different. So it wasn't like I could go confide in her about how I felt. So I just had to eat that. And I realized that when I go through relationships, even though I can cut someone off to protect, protect my feelings when it's done to me, it sends me into a spiral of um, not being good enough. What did I do to deserve that? Especially I know that I haven't done anything to you. Um, and then I get to the point where I do have resentment and I'll never talk to you again. And I can walk past you and not even acknowledge your presence. It's like you never existed. Existed, sorry. I hear that. E class? Um, yes. Um, I'm still working through my little emotional trauma. I'm getting a lot better though. Um, it's not only caused a problem in my romantic relationships, but just in my everyday, um, with friendships, um, even, you know, work relations, all of that. It, um, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it bother it's people bother me. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's heavy. It's heavy. That's why I don't like to really create relationships with people because, one minute, you know, you could be cool with somebody and then the next minute they can cut you off. Like you were saying, Will, about, you know, not answering uh, messages and things like that. Like that right there kind of, you know, kind of triggers me as well. And I'll, you know, withdraw, you know, from people who don't really show me, um, I guess, like the, the same amount of uh, effort or attention. Mm hmm now yeah. let me ask you both this so with triggers that we all endure separately and even collectively do you think it can add to a person's anxiety to where it almost puts you in a position to where you just don't want to deal with it because you never know when you can be triggered from this emotional baggage that we can carry around that someone or something might cause Who told you that? <laughs> Who gave you that piece of information? I would say I, I definitely um, <laughs> close the door ahead of time. When I see that it is, when I start to feel that anxiety, I've had panic attacks, um, spiraling, thinking about it. Um, and so that's what that's what starts the resentment that I realize that I feel that badly, you know. And you have you know staring at the wall episodes, or you're crying one minute over some State Farm commercial or something like that. That's a little too far. I mean, it's okay to cry. Man. No one's gonna blame me. Not at a State Farm commercial because Jake <laughs> is always there. That's why it's hurtful. <laughs> but you can still cry it don't matter i mean would you would you rather be watching something or just sitting in a blank room by yourself and then start crying like don't leave no don't leave me what is more therapeutic i know both crying can be but in what way really what way is more therapeutic for the person okay for me yeah how about you e-class um i close the door immediately um, when I feel that, you know, uh, that anxiety, um, though I do try to like build, you know, relations and stop being so withdrawn from people. I still, if it gives me that feeling, I, I, I close the door immediately. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. I don't have to go through that trauma again. So, so how much trauma can a person really endure before they just have a complete breakdown? I, I don't know me personally I don't I could tolerate a lot but like I said to avoid it I immediately just shut it down but we also, I don't, I don't, go ahead oh I was just saying I don't even give people that chance like if I feel like something is off it, 
hey, I, hey, I can't deal with it. Well, we also know that everyone is different when it comes to taking things. Like you, you can endure taking a lot, and then sooner or later, you you compress so much to where you just blow up and then they'll be thinking what the fuck is wrong with you like are you crazy and everybody's like i'm so surprised when people don't see signs of people like really just breaking down mentally and it's hard because we all know now that we're in this space to where mental uh, mental health is such a big deal where it should always be a big deal but now it's becoming more on the forefront that people should pay more attention to the signs but people become more and more blatantly uh disillusioned to the fact that like oh we didn't know so how much can a person really take before a cry for help really needs to happen i can tell you that i held it together for 47 years and then 40, 46 years, 47, I had a mental break. Mm -hmm. And then now at 48, just turned 48, I am just um, coming out of it on the other side, just barely because there's some days that I just can't hold it together either. Wow. Wow. I know I've had my days. I really have. And it's hard. It's hard, especially being like just a man because we as men, we're supposed to not talk about our emotions or our emotional buildup or baggage because like it almost like women do not want to listen and if they do they only listen for a few minutes until whenever and then they'll just shy it off so it makes us feel like why even bother talking about it we've been ingrained that men aren't supposed to feel so it's almost i think we have to condition ourselves that men do feel because immediately it's just like, oh, he's just been a bitch ass nigga, you know, <laughs> keep it moving. Yeah. But, but once you do start to evolve, you realize that both of us have emotional issues and stuff that we have to get through. So then you, you will listen. Mm -hmm. But why can't I be a bitch ass nigga to where I want to curl up be like, please just rub me and give me some Skittles. Like, is it that? No, but, that's not, but that's not it. You know, it's almost like um, it's the whining. It makes us it makes us feel like because you're supposed to be strong always no matter mm -hmm. what and so when you do express that little bit of weakness then you know it's almost like some women lose disrespect for men that way and these are the same exactly. women who said, yeah and these are the same women who said they want a man to be to take care of them so right mm -hmm. it, a man it, being a man is expressing because how do you that's going to listen to you while you express yourself when you can't reciprocate yeah it's hard it's really hard so that's why we go find strippers because they'll listen Lord have mercy. Card again. what <laughs> remember the last time and you told me that you just white <laughs> yeah yeah they'll, they'll yeah i'll and i'll repeat it again the only time i really want to listen to a woman is when i swipe my credit card because she'll be like hey will it's time to pay me swipe shut up so it's it's oh well, maybe I'm living the wrong life then. Oh, <laughs> don't you come at? Don't no no. I'm just saying that was on the last episode, so you, don't you chime in on that. <laughs> 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 but no, but on a serious tip, like, like just how much baggage is a person supposed to carry around before it becomes too much? Before it triggers you to say too bad. Oh, this. A bag and a half, like because. This is, it seems like the problems are so, emotional problems are so much different than like physical problems. Mm -hmm. You know, you may be able to accept, you know, uh, the loss of an, an arm or whatever, but emotional is ongoing. And it, it has so many different avenues to be triggered that I'm not sure if anybody has it all mastered or will have it mastered. Because nobody wants to go to therapy. You no, can master exactly. it. Especially in, in, in our community, no, they just feel like, you know, what's that for? Ain't nothing wrong with you. Go put some testing on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. And yeah. then they'd be like, oh, well, I need therapy. Well, go get therapy. No, I need weed child therapy. All you're doing is just masking the situation. You're not yeah, doing you're it. it uh-huh. Including a whole nother problem. 
this is sad. It's never ending. It, it, it isn't. You can't but say South America. You have to have someone that's a sounding board to, to talk about it because holding it in is horrible. Because it starts to physically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's just too much at one time. So, from uh, both of you being a women's perspective, if you were talking to anybody, whether it be male or female, what would be some things you would say how to help combat things that are going on when it comes to emotional baggage? I would say let it out. Grab a pen, paper, write it all down, mm -hmm. and just just keep writing until your hands get tired, you know, whatever it is. I second that and even if you have to write and burn because I do that sometimes I write how you feel and then burn it so then you're just done with it so, mm -hmm. in theory sometimes it does come back around but for the most part it's not as because you get those emotions out um, and even though a little bit of hurt sta stays behind you're done with it but writing definitely and talking about it to a therapist not just to anybody who will listen it's a different right Okay, so you want everybody to go the Angela Bassett route. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. You don't yeah. burn the clothes and stuff. You burn uh, what you write. Yeah, but you're still burning it, and she still burned everything. Well, I mean, that scene was fly, though. Yeah, okay, so, like she said, it was trash. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, if, yeah. yeah, so, if you're, if you're saying, you know, burn it, which is good, that is a great release, you're just saying you're, you're writing your thoughts out, and then you're burning it as if it's trash to get rid of it, dispose of it. Mm -hmm. So the Angela Bassett route, that's all I'm saying. Okay, I'll take that though. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not discounting what you say. It just make, mm -hmm. put it into a sense to where everybody can understand. Because we do have slow folks that listen to this. So. Oh, okay. I, listen, I'm not... I'm <laughs> not... <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I'm not calling people out, but sometimes people's imagination is not as vibrant as the next one. Yeah, so to all you out there are listening, I love all of you. I do. I'm just trying to help you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so uh, that's what you want to call it. Yeah, that's what I want to call it. So if you don't know what we're talking about, just go look up Waiting to Excel, Angela Bassett, and you'll see what we're talking about. Very easy. <laughs> You know, I don't like the way y'all are looking at me and judging me. I really don't. <laughs> ain't nobody doing, ain't nobody judging you. No. No, I see y'all faces. This just is, this is not it. This really is it. <laughs> well, how do you want us to look at you, Will? Well, if I had to guess. <laughs> never mind, I should never ask that. <laughs> okay. Whatever. <laughs> So we'll just keep this short and sweet because this is not going to go anywhere fast. Just overall, when it comes to a topic like this, really, and I ask y'all individually, what do y'all do when it comes to your own emotional baggage and how you deal with it? I write. I journal. And burn. I don't mind everything. I keep some things that, you know, I have to have something to read on my podcast. Oh, so you burn it after you're done read? No, whatever I burn, <laughs> it should never be read by anybody ever again in life. So it deserves to be burned because you know some of those feelings are not always um, sugar and spice. Mm -hmm. you know, well, you are, so how how about you just share a selection with us? You know, for the people out there and me too, because I'm interested. On my book, on something. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm filming on my phone and my it's on my phone. Oh, okay. I'll send it to you and you can put it in the description if you'd like. I can do that. That's fine. Okay, I'll send it to you. How about you, Erica? You got anything to burn after reading or reading after burn? 
No, I don't really burn stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I really yeah. haven't executed a safe way to do that, though. That is something that I want to do because um, writing a, uh, writing things have really been therapeutic for me. Like I love to write, so that has always been a good thing for me to do. And um, sometimes I exercise, you know, to get it all out. Um, I uh, pray, mm-hmm. and you know, that's that's it. Well, I can say for me that I I don't write. I have been more so recording, um, and I'm not trying to uh, whatever promote. But thanks to Erica, I want to say she gave me this website when it comes to like recording and you know making me instrumentals. And then I took it a step further to where I started recording just random funny things. So that's been very therapy for me because i've had like some traumatic things going on to where i can just release it and it's just it's been so great to just be able to let things go and let emotions and you know past hurtful memories that i never thought i'd be able to let go after a while um it's been really nice so i would definitely want to say thank you so much erica thank you it's all because oh of you. you're welcome yeah yeah it's it and as i'm serious i'm not joking um it's been really nice of course you know i've told you about it we've talked about it a little bit but it's because like you never know what people can do for you until you actually reach out and ask for help and mm-hmm. in a roundabout way you really help me more than you actually know oh yeah that's what's that yeah yeah, so I'm I'm really grateful for Erica because she's helped me out and you know conversations and it's always nice to just have people in your in your space who are just there to you know reach out because she's always said hey Will if you want to talk I'm always here no matter what and I have and I've utilized that so to all those people out there never be afraid to talk to somebody. Because people will listen, regardless if they don't have time. But just say, hey, I need to talk. It's important. And say it like that. Be very constrained on what you say and how you say it. Because you never know. You never know. So, once again, thank you, America. Thank you. Oh, no problem. And thank you. I appreciate that. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So, when I It makes me feel all warm inside. (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, uh, this episode has been very therapeutic because I needed to laugh like nobody's business. And, you know, they always say laughter is best for the soul, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So thank y'all for allowing me to be corny and laugh at me um, because I feel better than when I first started this podcast. Hey, that's what we're here for. We're here to support each other. One after another so we can all laugh we can all cry but if we do it together it's better if we do it together rather than doing it alone absolutely oh, you yeah. can't really do it alone i tried that mm-hmm. so from personal experience you can't do it alone no you yeah, can't I, i've tried that and trust me it's it's drove me more crazier than ever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well, ladies, this is the time to where y'all introduce yourselves to the people and the public. So let them know where they can find you, get a hold of you. And if you're interested, drop your phone number just in case. I'm still not dropping my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I care how many times you put it out there and ask, I'm going to never say never. Mm-mm. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> well, Miss Fatu, go ahead since you want to start off. <laughs> Hi humans, I'm Fatu. I have a podcast. Uh, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm under the name This Could Be a Book. It's T H I Z C U D B A O O K. Um, where I talk about my personal traumas from my childhood. Um, I talk about ridiculousness because sometimes I have to laugh. I can't be serious always. But it's just really about getting out my emotions out. I'm hoping that I reach someone who could be going through what I went through um, and see that there's a way out and heal myself at the same time. Definitely. Definitely. E-Class. Hey, you guys. Um, E-Class here. Um, Come and join me on the Kickback Pod. Um, You can follow me on Instagram at the Kickback Pod. Um, And yeah. 
just hit the link and you can follow me on all socials. There's too many to name and <laughs> remember, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Just go to Instagram and click the link. Yeah, she'll be there. She'll be there. You'll see her. You'll see her. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this of course, you know, is Mr. Sarcasm himself. You can reach me, sarcasm two underscores orgasms. I would love to thank my beautiful, beautiful guest, Miss Fatu, Miss E Class. And we're talking about emotional baggage and the trauma and triggers it can cause. So remember people, whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter how big or how small. It doesn't. Never be afraid to talk to somebody because we all have triggers. We all do. And we all have get these moments and spouts of anxiety. And it can happen to anybody. No one is perfect. No one escapes it. So just know that you are good. You are in a safe space. Just surround yourself with people who are willing to listen. Because sometimes people don't want to listen, but you have to say the you have to say the the words, help me. Please help me. And if you reach out, people will help you. But you gotta be serious about it. You can't cry wolf. You really can't. So this has been another episode of Sarcasm Orgasm. I've been joined by my guests, Miss Fatu, Miss E Class. And we're just talking about healing and triggers and traumas. So thank you so much for joining. Make sure you get all the information down in the link below. I will drop that for you so you can reach out to these beautiful people. So thank you so much for listening and tuning in. I'm your host, Will, and I'll talk to you all soon. All right, let's bounce. All right, let's bounce.